Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the Hawaiian Affairs Committee hearing. I'm Senator Miley Shimabukuro, Chair. We also have Vice Chair Senators um, Kurt Favela, um, and also members Ihara, Keoho Kaloli, and Richards. This hearing is being streamed live on YouTube. You can find links to viewing options for all Senate hearings and meetings on the live and on-demand video page, the legislature's website. It'll also be archived, too, so you can watch this hearing later. Um, if you're interested in sending, seeing the written testimony, you can go to our website at capital.hawaii.gov. In the unlikely event that we must abruptly end this hearing due to major technical difficulties, the committee will reconvene to discuss any outstanding business and a public notice be posted. <coughs> Um, for those testifying remotely, your audio will be muted and video disabled until it's your turn. And as is our practice, there's a two minute time limit per testifier. If there are any temporary technical glitches during your turn, we may have to move on to the next person due to time constraints. We appreciate your understanding and remind you that we have received your written testimony. And members, please wait to ask your questions for the testifiers until we have gone through all the testifiers for that measure. And as, as I mentioned previously, we have two agendas I'd like to go to the 101 agenda out of order. This is just one resolution, um, just so we can get that done and then go on to our GM. And so we're going to go to the 101 agenda at this time, HCR 32, requesting OHA to identify the scope of Native Hawaiian cultural appropriateness for the purpose of addressing Native Hawaiian disparities. And first, we have OHA in support. Aloha Chair, Vice Chair, Senator Richards. My name is Keopu Rielitz. I'm the Director of Advocacy with the Office of Hawaiian Affairs. You have our written testimony and support. I just wanted to make a couple of highlights. One of the reasons we thought that this was a measure um, to pursue this session is because we often see um, this body make laws or charge executive departments with um, doing culturally appropriate or culturally relevant programming. And we wanna go in partnership with the legislature to put some weight behind that. So as a mom who has one child soon to be two children in the public education system, the best example is when you know you charge the Ed Department of Education to do culturally appropriate programming, what does that mean? And what does that mean for me as a Hawaiian to be able to go to the Department of Education and say, they meant this and we want you to act on it um, without them saying, well, we tried our best. We wanna see what does that mean in practice? And so we're hoping to bring together community as well as government uh, partners to put some weight and some heft behind that and to really put into action the words that you charge the executive departments with. I'm here to answer any questions. Mahalo. Mahalo. Um, next we have the Hawaii State Council on Developmental Disabilities in support. Here. Um, we have the Center for Hawaiian Sovereignty Studies in opposition. Jacqueline <clears throat> Ambrose in support. Lou Fabrito in support. Aloha Consultants in support with amendments. Is anyone else here to testify? on Zoom or in person for HCR 32. Oh, yes, Angela, yes, yes. Angela Melody Young, thank you. Angela Melody Young testifying on behalf of CARES in strong support. Um, so what are Native Hawaiian disparities? Um, Native Hawaiians have higher rates of um, health disparities, um, such as higher rates of smoking, consuming alcohol, and obesity. Um, this group also has less access to cancer resources and control programs. Um, and within uh, uh, the wealth and income disparities, um, typically, um, perhaps Native Hawaiians experience um, low income marginalized um, disparities. So I'm gonna read research. Um, so Native Hawaiians are a diverse and growing population in the United States. And in addition, there are uh, 700,000 people in the country who identify as Native Hawaiians or Pacific Islanders. And within the 2021 American Community Survey, data examines how demographic characteristics as well as measures of health coverage and other social determinants of health and economic factors are driving health and health care. And it varies for Native Hawaiians um, overall and by subgroups. And within this data are underlying disparities further exacerbating health inequities. So they need really the um, leveling up in uh, healthcare and equitable policy making um, to ensure their rights. And Native Hawaiians represent a diverse ethnic group of minorities. Um, so we should be aware of these health and wealth disparities within this marginalized group of vulnerable population. Um, so this is a step in the right direction for improving um, the quality of life and health in the Native Hawaiian community. Thank you. 
yeah appreciate your testimony well, learning the native hawaiian <laughs> language as well so it's been so fun mahalo great thank you anyone else here for hcr 32 you see none members any questions yeah. okay <clears throat> You know, I like the fact that you, you know, you just stated um, that, you know, you want to support this uh, resolution moving forward into putting a little bit weight on the, you know, Hawaiian uh, disparities. Uh, one of the things that I, I learned since I've been in this square building prior to me being here, didn't let, really realize how lacked of our Hawaiian community is. And I, and I learned um, that one of them is identification and language. So we had bills circulating around and resolutions circulating around. And I'm pretty sure you guys might have heard me say one or twice in hearings. But I want to know what OHA can help us here in this square building in moving forward in having Hawaiian studies, language, and culture from pre-K to 12 and in the high school level being a core uh, um, studies for uh, our kids going forward. Thank you for the question. Um, I will say that I started in, de in December of this year, and I'm proud to be serving the Kapohana, Stacy Ferreira, who started a month before me. And what I can say, you know, I, I have actually worked at OHA before, and I know there's been lots of work prior to me being there, but I know that the work that we are doing from here forward or from, you know, Kapohana's state forward, as well as mine, is really trying to have a concerted um, and cohesive strategy of working with legislature legislators to move the needle on a lot of different things, this reso being one. Another one, which I will say proudly had some pretty robust discussion among our board of trustees. Um, I believe there was a couple of bills um, and as well as a couple of resos um, that looked to make a requirement for uh, for all students in the in the DOE system to have two credits or two years of native Hawaiian language and the board of trustees did vote to support um, and we did have a position of support to to support that becoming a requirement so that's just one instance but I think what's more important I want to make sure that we bring sort of more broadly is that you know our Kapohana is charged with bringing forth the action of the strategic plan Mana'i Maoli Ola and there's four strategic directions, health outcomes, economic stability, um, educational pathways, and quality housing. And in each of those, we are looking at those outcomes requiring participation and, and partnership with the state legislature. And we think that there have been quite a number of bills this year that have really had some really wonderful seeds to move things forward. And I, I know that I am eager to continue that partnership with the legislature. I shared one example, but I think we can be better partners here at the legislature. And I'm, I promise you that I'm we've been trying this session. I know that we can do it even better, but I, given the promise that I've seen this session, I think there's even more um, to be had in the, in the coming sessions. The reason why I say this is because you get over here uh, Native Hawaiian economic development needs, uh, Native Hawaiian education needs, Native Hawaiian health needs, and Native Hawaiian housing needs. Um, do you understand why our people is in a situation? We was the only one that didn't have their language. So if you look at all the nationalities that prospered, Japan, yeah, China, right? Every single nationality, Tongan, Samoans, they kept their culture and they kept their language. We didn't. And that's why I think going forward, asking OHA to continue to prioritize these things because we can write them here on the paper. That is great. But we're going to have to walk the talk and do the things right because our people are suffering because of that. And it's going to be good for all. Like the other day in the testimony that we had the guys who are, um, Early education, yeah, she said, uh, Borges, she brought it up. She said that Hawaiian education and Hawaiian language is good for all races in Hawaii because we live in Hawaii. We breed Hawaii. So going forward, I like work with you guys and Stacy. she knows this. Going forward, if we can, next session, prioritize some of these things that we just talked about. Appreciate it. Thank, thank you, Chair. Thank, thank you. you. Okay, thank you so much. Any more questions on HCR 32? Okay. Seeing none, I'm going to go ahead and recommend that we pass this as is. There's no tech amendments. I don't know. Um, and I would like to um, just summarize the testimony from Aloha Consultants in the committee report. Any discussion? Seeing none, the vice chair. 
Yeah, Chair Shubakuru. Aye. Vice Chair Vosai. Senator Ihara, excuse. Senator Kehokolole. Aye. Senator Richard. Aye. All right, passes. Okay, thank you. We're now gonna move on to our one o'clock agenda. This is um, GM 746, submitting for consideration and confirmation to the Hawaiian Homes Commission, Gubernatorial nominee Sonoy Marfo, for a term to expire June 30, 2027. And so first up we have um, DHHL in support. Good afternoon, Chair Shimabukuro, Vice Chair Fabella, and members of the committee. Uh, Kali Watson, uh, Director and Chairman of the Department of Hawaiian Homeland, <coughs> testified in strong support. I stand by my testimony, but I'd also like to add that um, in the short time that uh, Sonoy has been on the commission, she's uh, exhibited a lot of credi credibility, integrity, as well as um, you know, understanding of the process. I think the more important thing about Sonoy is uh, not only does she come from a, you know, a great uh, nonprofit that has great programs that we want to kind of incorporate and include and you know uh, make available to our homesteaders, but she's also a homesteader. So I think that perspective is very very valuable for a commission in trying to make decisions. She can articulate and you know explain as well as reach out and kind of share uh, the thoughts and comments that she's getting from the community and educate us as to that perspective. So I think that's very valuable and I appreciate her willingness to serve on the commission. Thank wow. you so much. Thank you very much. Um, we also have several um, commissioners, Hawaiian Homes Commissioner Randy Awo in support. Um, Hawaiian Homes Commissioner from Kauai, Dennis Nevis. They're all in support. Um, Commissioner Kunumuo um, in support. I see we have the CNHA in support, Makaha Hawaiian Civic Club, uh, Ahupa'o Nanakuli Homestead Board, so again, all in support. Let's see, Wainai Valley Homestead Community Association, Jemma Kepa in support, um, the Keokaha Panaeva Farmers Association, Nanakuli Mali Neighborhood Board, Samantha DeCourt, support. Yeah, there's it's all support comments, yeah. Nanakuli High Intermediate School PTSA, Mokwana Tector, the Shaw, um, Maui Lanai Mokupuni Council and Association of Hawaiians for Homestead Lands, and also the Shaw Oahu Mokupuni Kaupea Homestead Association President, Ivalani Leibon McBrayer, the Association of Hawaiian Civic Clubs, Matson Navigation Company Incorporated, um, Ho'omanopono LLC, in support as well. Hello, my Kako. Good to see you guys. And um, yeah, we're here to strongly support this uh, our nomination. And I got to tell you, um, I, it's the first time I'm going to say this publicly, but I'm kind of proud that Governor Green would keep his word when he made his campaign promises that he was going to do um, for the Hawaiian people. I never seen a governor so committed than him. I never vote for him because I never believed that he would do it. <laughs> <laughs> but he actually did, and it exemplifies in this uh, nomination right here. Um, because one, I used to live in Nanakuli Homestead for eight and a half years uh, during my second marriage, and I never felt more comfortable and more at home than in a homestead. Homestead life is a beautiful life. And the fact that um, Sonoy comes from the Nanakuli Homestead, I really appreciate that, that the governor took the time to pick somebody from the homestead to be on a, on a commission. So I appreciate the governor for that. Um, but also um, looking at her, at Sonoy's um, um, actions during the commission meetings and stuff, we had some tough hearings. We had some issues that was really tough, but you know, she vote her conscience, you know, and I like that you get quiet people on a commission. They're not always there to make noise or trying to get attention. But she has a quiet, contemplative personality. And then she just votes her conscience. So I really appreciate that about her. So, hey, God is good. Amen. And I'm glad that we have this uh, commissioner. And I hope she'll be there for both terms. Aloha. Mahalo. Okay. Mahalo. And I do um, want to acknowledge we have some elected officials in our audience as well. I saw Representative Kila and Councilmember Tupola. I don't know if you folks are just here for support or if you want to testify. OK, OK, thank you so much. Thank <laughs> you. 
Hello, Chair, Vice Chair, and Committee members. I'd like to just stand on my written testimony and support. Uh, you folks have seen that Sonoy is a very qualified individual. She comes from the homesteads of Nanakuli. And the thing that I really appreciate the most about Sonoy is that oftentimes you folks will see on our boards and commissions, the folks that sit there are coming at the latter part of their career. Mrs. Marfield is just in the starting of her career. She is one of the more younger members, but she is, I think, the future of what our home study should be. They're young families uh, raising their kids, working in the community, serving their community. And I think her being there in a commission in a time like this, where it's imperative that the department finds a path moving forward after the appropriations of Act 279 is important. And as Sonoy has never been one to, I think, step up to the plate in this capacity. There's nobody else I could think better for this time. And I think knowing that she is in the position that she is with the in peace, there's often that piece that we lack with our agencies and departments to work collaboratively and cohesively with our nonprofits. And I think that is something that the department desperately needs. So again, I'll stand on my testimony and support and I ask that you folks make the recommendation to move her forward. Thank you folks so much. Thank you very much, Rep. Zakila. I'll turn to Paula, welcome. Hello, Chair, committee members. Thank you so much for this time to testify. I just want to say thank you to all those who have already shared a lot of nice and valid comments about this nominee. You know, I've known Sonoy Marfil for over 15 years, and our path together started when our kids attended Punanaleo. And I wanted to share that because part of what would be a very good commissioner for us, for the state of Hawaii, is somebody that is rooted in the community, somebody that has roots in our culture and especially what our community is about. And to Representative Kila's point, you know, she is coming in with, look, her children. She is going to be representing voices of beneficiaries who have children this very same age that are concerned for their future, their ability to live here for generations to come. So I wanna thank her husband, who's a public servant, her children who are here watching their mother step up. And no doubt moving from a nonprofit into a governmental role is a steep hill to climb, but the other DHHL commissioners will be perfect mentors for her. You know, they're gonna help her to learn how to change her voice of community advocacy to government advocacy, which is gonna to have to strengthen. She's gonna to have to learn about bureaucratic levels that all of us go through that'll be difficult, but she has a lot of good people that are ahead of her, leading the way, helping her, mentoring her. So I encourage you to support her in this endeavor. I know from myself and all of these community members, we will stand by her as she wades through difficult decisions and we will help her as much as she can to succeed, to represent us fairly and adequately so that we can get what our beneficiaries need in the Waianae Coast. Mahalo. Mahalo. Mm -hmm. Okay, now we have many individuals in support. Um, these are all in support. Patrick Kahabaiola'a, Kahea Faria, Walt Kaneakua, who's also commissioner, Kaipo Nuwanu, um, Pastor Car Alan Cardenas Jr., Georgette Stevens, Paul Ayo, Tamara Hayden, Ileana Reales, um, Michelle Brown, Carm Akeem, and if you're here, just um, um, pipe up. Um, Ed Werner, Elijah Werner, uh, P.W., Johnny Pua Awai, Makai Freitas, Marsha He, <coughs> Andrea Diaz Machado, Robin Brandehoff, Michelle Piper, Vanel Nam. Chadwick Rolden, Kipukai Kuali'i, yeah, Kuali, uh, Michael Kalekini, who's also a commissioner, Irish Barber, Kapua, Kalekiko Kumai, I did see, yes, thank you. It should be followed by Jermaine Myers. Aloha, Aloha. Kapua Kalekiko Kumai, no ka aina ho opulo pulo ka awawa wainai mai au, haole aho noho iene i ke ia la. Aloha nui ya u Sanoi. You know, Sanoi is a right person. We have many right people, and she is one of them. Uh, like Councilwoman Tupola shared, she has raised her children that is grounded in our culture, in our language, and this is a path that she also took. So, I'm so proud of her at her young age. I know that you folks are going to confirm her because there's no other choice. Because there's, although we have many people that can fill this position, 
She is the right person for this position right now. So like DeMont had shared, I also appreciate Governor for um, bringing her to the top and for our chair, Kali Watson, for strongly supporting her because she and the other commissioners sit on that board to serve the beneficiaries. Unlike our chairman, who has two hats, beneficiaries and his boss, the governor. I will continue to hold my commission, commissioners to include the chair, to serve the beneficiaries, even when it is in conflict with what the state desires. That's their purpose. That is their mission. And so that's the hard job that they have especially for our chair, Kali Watson. So thank you, mahalo nui. Thank you so much, Kapua. Uh, Jermaine Myers, also in support, followed by um, Patty Kahanamoku Teru. <laughs> Aloha, Aloha Chair, Aloha Vice Chair, Aloha members of the committee. My name is Jermaine Myers. I'm in Nanakuli, Hawaiian Homestead, Lessie. I fully support Sonoy Morpho, and humbly ask for your vote in support of her confirmation to the Hawaiian Homes Commission. I believe that Sonoy brings balance to the Hawaiian Homes Commission. She's currently the only commissioner that is a mother of young children. She's a resident of Nanakuli Hawaiian Homestead. Nanakuli has the highest concentration of Native Hawaiians in the world as a resident and Native Hawaiian vahine that lives among Native Hawaiians, Sanoi brings valid life experiences and mana'o to the commission. I also support Sanoi's confirmation because she's a woman of integrity and spiritual honesty and values. She supports returning Native Hawaiians to the land she understands that rentals keep waitlisters on the wait list. Homesteading is the core of the Hawaiian Homes Commission Act, Hawaiian Homestead Commission Act, Hawaiian Homestead Commission. I'm a member of the Nanakuli Miley Neighborhood Board. Currently, eight of our nine board members are Native Hawaiians, of which seven live on homestead in Nanakuli. Our non-Hawaiian member's wife was raised on Nanakuli Hawaiian homestead. We unanimously voted in support of Sanoi Morfell's confirmation. Mahalo for your support of Sanoi's confirmation. Mahalo. Patty Kahanamoku Teruya, so in support. Um, Eva, Elizabeth Eli, all in support. Stace Lynn Eli, I saw. Um, Denver Momoa. Liana Cortez Kekava, Ke yeah, Kekava. Um, Shireen Kili Inoy, Crystal Westbrook. Okay. Anyone else here for GM 746? Yes, yes, Lokana Pua. I'm going to try to sit on this gracefully. I see people rocking. <laughs> Aloha, my name is Lokana Kele Ikoa Thank you for the opportunity to come before you in confirmation of this wonderful woman, Sonoy Marfil. I'm in total uh, agreement with you and the people of our state in offering her this position, in strong support of her. This is a manawahine. She brings to the table so much, not only as a beneficiary, but as a mother, an educator. She just brings so much, and this is what we need. We've got a wonderful panel, our, our commissioners currently, but we're bringing in more life. As as uh, who breed? As as our chair, or somebody breed? She lives Hawaii, breeds Hawaii, and that's what you said, Senator, and that's what she does for us. She lives Hawaii, she breeds Hawaii in her culture, in everything that she does, her being. And this is who we are. He Hawaii yao. 
So thank you again for your consideration, for our governor, even putting her up to the panel, and for every person that is in support. And we can be able to agree to disagree, but we have a voice, and our voice is speaking today. Mahalo. Mahalo. Anyone else here for GM 746? Okay, yes, Angela Melody. Aloha. Actually, I don't know the nominee, but I will testify because it seems like there were so much passionate discussions going on, and I want to be supportive of the community. Um, and so actually for our Kapolama Neighborhood Security Walk, we train with the DHHL uh, homesteads with District 8 Kapule, Auntie Jody, Citizens Patrol represent. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've actually like walked with them at the homesteads. <laughs> so um, we work with the community policing team. <laughs> so um, yeah, I'd like to um, support the uh, nominee and um, the community roots, um, I'm reading the profile um, from In Peace um, that the nominee has um, will create a strong foundation to serve in the community partnerships. Um, and um, so with the knowledge of Hawaiian Pacific studies and pursuing um, a major in Hawaiian culture, focusing on the importance of family mo'oka'ohau, genealogy. Sorry, <laughs> it's hard to pronounce. Um, I think that's really going to um, present a good foundation to building up the Native Hawaiian community, um, especially with um, some of the vulnerabilities um, that do exist in the Native Hawaiian community. Um, and so um, the nominee um, I'm reading has a passion for education and culture um, and will lead the staff in the design and creation of educational programming and activities um, to create knowledge of cultural practices to really boost and enhance and elevate the community. Um, yeah, so I'm in support. Thank you. Wonderful. Thank you so much. Anyone else here for GM 746? <coughs> um, none. Members, any questions of the testifiers before we bring the nominee up? Okay, see now then, yes, welcome. Um, and Ms. Sonoy Morfil, if you'd like to make a statement, you can, it's optional. Do you have something? Okay, very yes, good. Yes. But. Kalamai Pako Unao. But I do, Chair, Vice Chair, members of the committee, Mahalo Nui, Nokia Manaba, Aloha Nui Kako. I come before you today, Hambon and honored to have the Koleana to serve at the Department of Hawaiian Homeland as the Commissioner for Oahu. When I think about the vision of Prince Jonah Kuhio Kalaniana Ole, he had, it symbolized a commitment to the preservation and empowerment of Native Hawaiians, of our people, ensuring that they have access to land for residential, pastoral, and agricultural purposes. As commissioner and beneficiary, I have the kuleana. It's a huge kuleana, but I have the kuleana to be the voice and the advocate for the rights and the welfare of Native Hawaiians. It's about listening to the voice of the community, understanding their needs and working tirelessly to address them. For me, it's a bridge between the government and the people and having that open communication, ensuring that policies are not just implemented, but are done so with the utmost integrity and transparency. And it's also about access to programs and assistance that will rehabilitate Native Hawaiians. And most importantly, it's about the Pilina building. In carrying out these duties, I will always remember the principles of aloha and mahalo. I'm committed to serving with integrity, humility, and dedication. And I'm also committed to working hand in hand with the beneficiaries, the department, and leading in the only way that I know how. 
Mahalo no yakako. Mahalo. Um, members, any questions? Questions? Yeah. 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 Um, we had great conversation, and I think I asked you a question. I'd just like to um, for you to reiterate it. Why? But you've already touched on a lot of why. And um, but I want to hear a little bit more. And these are your children yes. with you today. Yes. <laughs> I think that's part of it. But I want to hear a little bit more, please. Absolutely. And so I want to introduce my Ohana. This is my husband, Byron Marfil, my daughter, Mahia Marfil, and my youngest daughter, Mahina Marfil. Our oldest daughter is um, in Iowa attending university. But this opportunity allows me to be the voice, to be the voice for my people as a beneficiary, as a Native Hawaiian, as a woman, as a mother, as a community member. Those experiences allow me the opportunity to speak for those who do not have the floor to speak. And so this is why I thought it was such a keen opportunity to be that voice and to come and and to ask to be a commissioner, an Oahu commissioner. And so here is my opportunity. And <clears throat> the fact that you're involving the family, especially young people, and you, you teach by setting an example of how to get involved. So I'd ask you young ladies, watch mom, see how she does it. Um, one correction, um, that was our testifiers, and I think it was Mr. Jermaine Myers, who said, commissioner with young kids. I know Makai Freitas yeah. has young kids too. Yeah, he... Oh, mother, okay. <laughs> okay. I wanted to clarify because Makai's daughter and my twins are classmates, so I know. Uh, but, no, we, we had the, um, like I said, that conversation. You talk about your kuleana. You talk about setting a direction. And the best thing I like it is youthfulness because it's coming with a young voice as well, which is going to help us going forward. So thank you, Chair, and thank you, Sanoi. look forward to getting to know you a little bit better. Thank you. Vice Chair Fidel. You know how um, when I first heard your name going to be representing Oha, I mean Oahu um, and the Hawaiians, in that capacity for the Oho, um, Oho's position. You know, I was really excited. I was happy. Since I've been in this square building and been involved with Hawaiian homes, I'm going to tell you the truth. And, and you, you know, conversations that we have here and now <coughs> in our beautiful Nanakuli Valley. We don't know more anybody like, like this. It's the, one of the first few. I think this is history in the making, Sonoy. And I said, I know about it. Because this is what we need. Yeah. As the people to prosper, to really enhance our well being and living and loving our culture, especially how much you love your valley. Because you know, I do the same, even though I'm from Ever Beach, you know, I love the valley. But the bottom line is what you bring to the table for all the commissioners and all everybody that wants to do what you do that cannot do. Not everybody gets chosen, you know that. Few are chosen, chosen and, and only few can do what you do. But for me, I, you know, I 110% support you and your Ohana. Just go forward and, you know, continue. And the word is I use, continue to continue, make us proud. And I, and I thank you for, for stepping up to serve, knowing that you do have a young family. Appreciate you, Sunoy. Thank you. Oh, thank you, Chair. Other questions? Questions? Oh, oh. Um, I have a question. Um, you know, one thing that, um, you know, I, I would love to just, just explore with you is, you know, we have the example of Kamehameha Schools, you know, and how they have taken their trust and now become one of the richest trusts in our whole nation. Is there anything, I, I know that it's probably maybe it's apples and oranges since they're, you know, different, they're not government. Is there any ways that, that DHHL could emulate them? And is there any way we can or we're already doing it? I think that we are doing some of that already. I think that the chair's vision to partner with different trusts and to be able to build those pilina um, is important moving forward. We might not have all the answers. We might not be able to do everything that 
we have the vision for, but the opportunity to build and create Pilina that can then extend what we're doing mm -hmm. is, is really important and is something that I think is, is going to be beneficial for the department. Okay, well, I'm glad to hear that because, um, you know, when I first came into the legislature, um, the DHHL was getting settlement monies from the, the previous lawsuit. And I know there was, you know, criticism, you know, raised on, you know, all this money that they were getting, you know, you know, why wasn't the, there something, a way to really maximize those resources? Um, and so, yeah, are there, do you folks have on staff um, people with that kind of financial um, know-how or how to do with those kinds of investments and how to maximize trust. I know that given the chair's um, new opportunity, right? He's he's come on board. He's brought in the people that he thought was best fit for the position. So I I do know, given his experience, he is bringing those people and and closing those gaps that he has seen in the department. Okay. Oh, very good. Very good. Um, and do you have, um, you know, in terms of the the historic settlement that was given the six hundred million dollars? I mean. Are you, you know, what are your thoughts? Are you excited about the kind of plans going forward to use those monies? Is, is there anything outside the box that's happening that you want to, that you're excited about? I think in my infant stages, I've been, I've been serving for seven months. We were, a, I was put on a pig and I was able to look at the Act 279 and the strategic plan. And so it gave me a good idea, a good breath about what it is that we're doing and how we pivot given the times, right? Mm -hmm. When that strat plan was created, it was a different time than where we are now. And so there is opportunity. The chair has created different opportunities for us to look at. And so with, the, with those um, innovations, I will say, it'll help the department, it'll move some things forward, and it will, it will allow us to open doors that we may have never opened before. Wonderful, wonderful, thank you. Any other questions, members? Okay, okay seeing none, well, I, I'm ready to make our recommendation that uh, we advise and consent. Um, any discussion? Okay, Vice Chair for the vote. All right, Chair Shubakuru. Aye. Vice Chair votes aye. Senator Ihara, excuse. Senator Kehoe Kalole. Aye. Senator Richards. Aye. Motion passes. All right. Congratulations. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I think we want to get a, a photo. Yeah, yeah, a photo. Maybe, maybe it's you and the members, and then we can do like whoever else can come in. So, yes. Let's gavel out, though. Let's gavel out. Yes, yes, yes. Oh, oh. We are adjourned. <laughs> <laughs>